Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains somewhat controversial, and today we are going to do a video about a particular individual who I hinted I might want to make a video about at some point, and people asked me to. This was months ago, and I kind of put it on the back burner, and uh, I decided now is a good time, why not, to talk about the ever infamous Edward Thompson. Edward Thompson was the chief mechanical engineer at the London and Northeastern Railway between 1941 and 1946, and his tenure at the London and Northeastern is somewhat hit and miss. He's often considered one of the worst chief mechanical engineers of that railway, but it's not as clear-cut as that. There's a lot more going in to Edward here than one might think. So without further ado, this is the story of Edward Thompson. Edward Thompson was born on the 25th of June, 1881. He was the son of an assistant master at Marlborough College, and he attended that college before moving on to further his education at Pembroke College in Cambridge, and he earned a third-class degree there. Prior to working on the railway, Thompson's background consisted almost entirely of classroom academics when it came to mechanical engineering. This contrasts a bit to Sir Nigel Gresley. Gresley also attended Marlborough, but he had practical experience as a pupil at Horwich Works. But Thompson did start working in the industry in the early 1900s. He was assistant divisional locomotive superintendent on the Northeastern Railway, and in 1912 he was appointed carriage and wagon superintendent for the Great Northern Railway. However, he took a break from working on the railways during World War I when he served with the United Kingdom's armed forces. When that war ended, he returned to working on the railways, and eventually he became a workshop manager at Stratford Works in 1930. He would retain that position until he became Chief Mechanical Engineer of the London and Northeastern Railway. And it's known that Thompson disagreed with Gresley about many issues regarding locomotive design. The largest dispute was Thompson's criticism of Gresley's conjugated valve gear, also called just the Gresley gear, for three-cylinder engines. Thompson's issue with it is that they worked well during peacetime, but due to poor maintenance during wartime, they tended to experience problems. Outside of that, though, they were excellent valve gears. Gresley also experienced a heated debate between himself and Thompson's father-in-law, Sir Vincent Raven. It's sometimes theorized that this may have been why Thompson criticized Gresley so heavily. If there was any true animosity between them, it's largely hearsay, as no evidence seems to exist that Thompson outright hated Gresley on a personal level or anything, but there was definitely serious disagreement when it came to locomotive design, and it was something that was unusual as Sir Nigel Gresley was heavily respected by most, and many did not question him that often when it came to his ideas. Thompson was kind of the exception in that regard. He was not afraid to challenge Gresley's point of view. Gresley had been the chief mechanical engineer of the London and Northeastern since the 1923 grouping. However, after a short illness on the 5th of April 1941, Gresley suddenly died at the age of 64. This put the railway in a really difficult spot. It was right in the middle of World War II, for one, and they were under the control of the War Department. They had no successor to Gresley in mind, but they needed one very quickly. The first thing they did was actually request permission from the Southern Railway to make the job offer to their chief mechanical engineer, Oliver Bullied. Bullied had actually worked with Gresley as his assistant until joining the Southern four years before that. The Southern Railway allowed this, but Bullied declined the offer. J.F. Harrison, who would eventually go on to design the Duke of Gloucester, was a popular choice, but he was 42 years old, and it was considered inappropriate for someone so young to take the position. The board then looked at Arthur Peppercorn for the role, but Thompson had seniority over him, so Edward Thompson became the new Chief Mechanical Engineer of the London Northeastern Railway. And his tenure was... questionable, at best. Now that he was in a significant position of power and authority, 
he was able to actually start using his own designs in actual practice. But he was somewhat restricted, and the problems he experienced were not entirely his fault. Again, World War II. It was difficult for him, if not impossible, to get approval to build an entirely new locomotive from scratch. He would have to remodel locomotives he already had. One of the first things he did was start London and Northeastern on the path to standardization. Up until that point, there hadn't been a standard design ethos for every locomotive they used. Gresley was much more of a tinkerer, an experimenter, almost an artist. And many of his designs differed greatly when it came to the generic components they utilized. Thompson wanted to fix that, and to be fair, from a business perspective, this was actually a great idea. Standardization makes maintenance a lot easier, and costs go down. But accomplishing this task under wartime restrictions would not be easy, and Thompson was notoriously difficult to deal with. He didn't like being questioned. Despite the fact that he had made a career out of questioning Gresley, he himself did not appreciate it when his underlings challenged him. The men that worked with him found dealing with him frustrating, but in Thompson's defense, he was probably under a lot of stress. He had a lot on his plate, and the war was making that a lot more difficult. Additionally, he was likely suffering from depression, as his wife had died in 1938, and he was known to be very lonely after her passing, which is understandable. The women that worked with him actually found him rather polite. He seemed more keen to be a gentleman around them, with his male co-workers taking the brunt of his frustrations. He was also very keen on his image. He always wore a suit, never had a hair out of place, and his office stationery was all gold-plated. He clearly took great pride in himself to a certain degree, but how justified was he? After all, he had not yet proven himself a capable engineer when compared to the late Gresley. He definitely had a solid academic background, but he'd never had to design a locomotive on his own. And the task before him was to standardize a railway by rebuilding a lot of pre-existing locomotives. He was likely aware that the better way to go about this would be just to build replacements from scratch to replace the older locomotive models, but the war prevented this action, so he was forced into the rebuilding. And this gives Thompson a bad look historically, since pretty much every single design rebuild he did was a Gresley model many of the Pacifics in particular. Some sources say this was deliberate on Thompson's part out of spite for Gresley, but it's debatable how true that may be. Literally, he probably could have picked pretty much any locomotive to remodel, and it would have been tied to Gresley. In that time, most of them would have been, especially the successful ones, and he had no choice but to remodel them given what he was tasked with doing. He couldn't build new ones because of the war, but he had to standardize the lines. What choice did he have? That being said, there was at least one occasion where one of the locomotives he rebuilt was probably a little bit motivated by spite. He decided to rebuild one of Gresley's A1 Pacifics as his new Thompson Class A1 Slash 1. That in itself is fine, but the one he specifically chose to do this experiment to was number 4470 Great Northern. Great Northern is notable as being the very first Gresley Pacific type locomotive. It has deep historical relevance in that regard, and many felt even at that time that it should be preserved for that reason, but Thompson chose to rebuild it anyway. It's also known that the chief draughtsman and a number of high up officials within the railway tried to deter Thompson from doing that, insisting he do it to literally any other A1, but Thompson had no interest in doing it. He wanted it to be the Great Northern, and this rebuilt locomotive appeared in traffic in September of 1945. It was classified as A1, and all of Gresley's A1 were reclassified to A10. The A1s were already pretty decent, as they were, but Thompson's remodeling caused a number of teething problems. These were fixed, but the engine never ran as well as it had before remodeling. This would be pretty much the case for almost every single Pacific that Thompson worked on. Every time he tried to remodel one of Gresley's Pacifics, or turn a different model locomotive into a Pacific, it seemed like there were always issues. For example, he redesigned Gresley's P2 class, which were originally 282 Express Passenger Locomotives, into 462 Pacifics. The P2s had been quite good prior to Thompson's changes, but after his <clears throat> improvements, they suffered wheel slip, frame movement, vibration, and loose fittings. The subsequent A2-3s were much the same way. Thompson had a weird fixation on two things. First of all, he absolutely hated the Gresley gear. He would not use it. He always used Walshart's valve gear, which is a very old valve gear from 1844. 
For its time, it was quite good, and in some ways, the wall shirt's valve gear is alright, but these locomotives just hadn't been designed to utilize it, and adding it in place of the Gresley gear caused a lot of issues. The other thing was that he insisted that the connecting rods always be the same length in the locomotive, despite there really being no logical reason for doing this. This meant that the inside cylinder had to be placed as far forward as possible, causing much longer wheelbases than intended. The nature of the alternate valve gears meant that they used divided drive. Although it reduced total stress and strain in the entire center crank axle, this ethos did not lend itself to frame integrity, causing stress cracks and frame damage. As a general rule, pretty much every single Pacific that Thompson touched turned out horrible, much worse than they had been. Although the worst example of something he built was actually not a Pacific at all, it was the tank engine, the Thompson Class L1. With these, Thompson was actually finally able to build them from the ground up, and that's great and all, but they were in no way suited for the work in which they were designed. They had 5 foot 2 inch driving wheels, which gave them good power at low speed for freight work, but they were meant for passenger service. They were so powerful at high speeds that they would actually shake themselves to pieces. Easily the worst thing Thompson ever created. Sadly, Thompson is often judged based off of his failures, of which there were many, but his tenure was during World War II, so he was operating under restrictive times. And not everything he produced was terrible. The Thompson Class B1 was a 460 mixed traffic steam locomotive. These were specifically designed for the war to be as cheap as possible to build. The downside of them was that they ran very rough, with crews often complaining about the overall ride quality, but in terms of reliability, maintenance, and everything else, they were actually extremely good. They turned out just fine in that regard, and were considered successful because, well, yeah, they rode rough, but they were cheap, and they needed to be cheap for that time. Thompson had accomplished that, and made it so that they were actually workable if you could get over the ride quality. Two of these locomotives are actually in preservation, and the class wasn't actually withdrawn until the 1960s during British Rail's modernization plan, whereas most Thompson classes were withdrawn well before that. Another one that Thompson worked on was the Class K one, although admittedly this was towards the end of his tenure, and his principal assistant and successor, Arthur Henry Peppercorn, had finished the work on them. When Thompson had retired, he left down strict protocol for Peppercorn to follow when it came to locomotive design which Peppercorn proceeded to completely ignore. The result was that the K-1 actually turned out to be exceptional. While it still took some of Thompson's design ethos into account, for the most part, it was Peppercorn's baby at this point. They also lasted until the 60s, and one is still in preservation. Number 62005, another major positive thing that Thompson did was actually improve passenger safety on the railways. He introduced steel body coaches to London Northeastern. These new coaches would actually be the forerunner to British Railway's Mark I coaches. So he definitely left his mark on British Rail history in a positive way in that regard. But he's often remembered for his inept designs when it came to the Pacifics in particular. Upon his retirement in 1946, he had only managed to design a handful of decent locomotives, whereas the majority were either bad or somewhat averagey at best. Again, it wasn't entirely because of him. He was in charge of the designs during World War II and had to answer to the War Department, so it wasn't like he had complete freedom to do whatever he wanted. Despite this, though, he's often considered the worst chief mechanical engineer that London and Northeastern ever had. Regardless of what you think of him, I would say that Thompson, in the position he was, probably did do the best he could. Not everything he did was wrong, not everything he did was bad. He would die in 1954, at the age of 73. Before we go, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Brightline Blue, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hot 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitson 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, and Lock Kraken. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.